Yeah, but it's your turn to come in the front of me. I'm busy right now, Ethan. I'll be right there. Grandpa. Grandpa, it's your turn to come up with me. Grandpa. Yeah, I'll be up in a little bit. Grandpa's coming just a little bit. And then the same kind of thing on this side with the actuators. Sure, nothing else is going on. No cracks in the exhaust. Um, this kind of leakage, pretty common on a DC. If it's not leaking, it's not a DC free. Oop. Watch out. And then same thing for the tire here. You did it. All right. And then leading edge of the wing. I kind of step back. This uh, lens that covers the uh, landing light. This is actually a requirement because if this comes off, you've got all sorts of controllability problems uh, with that glass off. So that wire has to be in there. And then I just kind of look underneath the wing. Nav lights, make sure they're uh, it's a nice operational. Turn those on and make sure they will run it. And then uh, you yellow around here. This is actually huge ailerons, 24 feet of aileron, just on one side alone. So you just kind of make a look at the attachment pole. Make sure everything is, is good. Is that a fabric? fabric? Yes, all the controls uh, surfaces are fabric. The rest of the airplane is all aluminum is that and for rivets. Weight? Exactly. Wow, exactly. It's and it's also to for, control, uh, to some extent, it's not so much that, but it's a replaceability issue too. Um, if, you know, it's, if somebody that does this all the time can easily cover the, you know, if we have a lot of times we do get uh, control surfaces and things that kind of get damaged more than anything else, but we try not to do it in a 70-year-old airplane. If it was a windy, gusty situation, we'd probably leave these on just before we're ready to go, but today is gorgeous. So I'm going to take this off. This actually locks the controls up there. Yeah, we have them on all the surfaces. You got your trim. It has trim tabs. Exactly right. Yeah, we have all the trim tabs on all three. All, all three controls. Yeah. And just a general basic look. And I started here, and I end here. So before I had done all the whole tail and everything, it basically checked the same concept. So. Sure, quick, sure, what you absolutely. Thanks. You guys both fly yourselves? No, no. You're Ferrari guys, though, right? Uh, yeah, I, I fly. I was the one that. That's right, Brian. Right? That's my Cessna. Over there. <laughs> oh, okay, that was all right. It's all coming back to me. <laughs> Very good. Uh, basic stuff. I mean, uh, there's a lot in here, you know. Uh, specifically, what each one does, I wouldn't even begin to tell you. But um, the important thing is, you know, you've got you're dealing with with actual pulley and direct uh, engine control situations. So you want to make sure that you don't see any fraying. Um, some of these are high pressure lines, like this. You don't want to see any fittings, you know, doing excessive leaking. This is a DC3, so you're going to see. A little bit. Yeah, it's it's not a DC3 if it's not. And uh, anyhow, you got. Uh, you want to check all these lines for leaks and so on and so forth. That's your uh, your oil uh, reservoir up there, so you don't want to make sure that there's no uh, leakage coming out of that. And your basic strut condition of the gear. Gear is uh, kind of like the most complicated thing on the airplane because you got to pull one lever and another lever, and um, it locks itself in pretty good. So if you want to make sure that the knuckle braces are lined up, that this thing actually is locked down, which it is. And how much did you? Uh, yep. Thank you. How much I don't want did you? you uh, a nice jacket. <laughs> how, uh, where did you get these tires? Did you, did you have them made, or did you? Uh... No, it's it's um, you know the best person to ask that is uh, is is Ron, Captain Ron. They used to have six of these things, but no, uh, I think Goodyear still makes these things. They do. They're not cheap. I imagine. Yeah, not cheap. But that that's basically what you're checking, uh, at least under the wheel well, and then the engine. Uh, you know, all the actuators for the cowl flaps and so on and so forth. So. 
one-handed get gear up, or you have to pump it with two handles. Yeah. One handle unlocks. But the, the uh, wings actually yeah. attach together, so there's not a full running spar on it, but they, uh, you can actually take the wings off. Oh, really? In one section. Yeah. I think uh, there was an inspection at one point uh, when it was yeah. done, and Ron actually did it. That's the the wheel uh, This gear does not go completely into the wheel well. Oh, really? It's, it was designed that if we ever had to do, I mean, this is the thinking back in the 30s, if you had to do a wheel up, la uh, gear up landing, that at least you, you wouldn't be completely on the belly. Yeah. Um, like you'd be real close, a little bit of prop damage, but you'd be real close. B-17, about the same deal. Yeah, Part yeah. I mean, that was the, you know, that was the mentality. Right same thing. Yeah. Sounds like a good yeah. idea. <laughs> it's, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> I haven't heard any stories about somebody actually landing with a gear up. But... Need them both up. Is that is that yours? It's not mine. No, I, I rented it. Yeah, from, from, from the that's from a brand new sky. It's about a 2000, 2003, something like that. Yeah, in, in GA terms.